Hey, in this video, I'm going to look into Odyssey, a YouTube alternative, and what a decentralized YouTube could look like. Odyssey isn't yet another video content platform. It presents a refreshing vision for the future of content sharing, a vision that's decentralized, censorship resistant, and isn't controlled by advertisers' demands. To put it simply, it's a platform that wants to return the feeling of how YouTube felt in its early stages. It sounds simple, but what's at stake here is the future of online content sharing as we know it. To understand the Odyssey versus YouTube debate is to understand the differences between two radically different approaches to how the internet should work. Today's digital landscape is full of complaints and disappointments about how many creators have been the victims of unfair content demonetization and seemingly undeserved copyright strikes. Odyssey aims to solve this. Welcome to Crypto Finally Explained, the most crypto-friendly educational YouTube channel for actually learning crypto. Here, I finally explain crypto topics using simple animations, visual doodles, and real-life examples, so no matter if you're 5 or 75, you'll be able to understand it. In this video, we're going to take a deeper look into the Odyssey video platform, what it has to offer as a decentralized platform, and finally answer the question of what is library, because that's the foundation on which Odyssey is built. Let's see what Odyssey is all about. On the surface, Odyssey is, simply, a video sharing platform with some novel solutions in its architecture. But the importance of these core differences is crucial, and to understand the need for it, it's important to get a better view of why, when, and how was Odyssey created. Odyssey was created in 2020 by Library Incorporated, a software company that uses blockchain-based file sharing and payment networks to create and power up various platforms. One of these platforms is Odyssey. In order to understand what created the demand for yet another video sharing platform, it's important to understand the context of that time, particularly the context of what was the prevailing mood problems and discussions when it came to video sharing. In late 2016, a new chapter in YouTube's history was opened. Various creators began voicing their concern about a serious problem. The problem in question was the tendency of YouTube to silence various creators by demonetizing their videos. It was something like a new form of censorship imposed by the requirements of companies who were willing to advertise their product or service on the platform. This period of advertisers choosing to boycott various creators and thus reducing revenue for YouTube itself is known today as the adpocalypse. This term was popularized by PewDiePie, who was among the most vocal creators when it came to the changes within the video sharing platform in question. PewDiePie has expressed frustration with demonetization affecting his content and was outspoken about the lack of transparency and consistency in YouTube's demonetization policies. Sometimes, videos containing harmless or advertiser-friendly content were flagged and demonetized without a clear explanation. But this was only the beginning of the real problem. In 2020, Ethan Klein from H3H3 Productions rang the alarm bells when he exposed the sudden demonetization of hundreds of YouTube channels. A huge number of creators were left baffled as their videos were hit with widespread demonetization without clear explanations or recourse. These examples are just a snapshot of the controversies and challenges that have embroiled YouTube's demonetization and copyright strike policies in recent years. But the biggest issue is that YouTube's dubious monetization policies, fair use protection, and attempts to protect creators' rights aren't really questions of the past. To this day, it continues to be a hot topic within the YouTube community, one which leaves many creators puzzled and unsure about the future of their professional path as content creators. To put it simply, there was a problem. A vacuum appeared, a widely felt demand for something like a decentralized YouTube, a place where creators wouldn't be afraid that their work will be flagged as inappropriate for no clear reason. People in Library Incorporated felt that clearly as well. This is why, in 2020, Odyssey was born. This is the year when the great debate of Odyssey versus YouTube began. Now, as mentioned earlier, the context is of utmost importance when it comes to understanding why Odyssey was created. Because very few individuals understood the need for a decentralized platform until people felt how unfair things can get when the centralized counterpart began implementing biased decisions. As you can see, the lack of transparency from centralized platforms, be it political bodies, financial institutions, or video sharing platforms, is why crypto alternatives for everything are being created. The Odyssey video platform is just like that. A decentralized platform. A decentralized YouTube, if you will. But let's take a deeper look under the hood of this project. Odyssey offers a revolutionary solution powered by blockchain technology. With its decentralized approach, Odyssey provides content creators with the freedom that they miss from the old YouTube days, while granting users an uncensored, engaging experience. Okay, great, but how do they do that? At the heart of the Odyssey lies the Library Framework, a blockchain-powered protocol that's tailored specifically for video sharing. Unlike traditional platforms, Library's decentralized nature ensures that content remains immutable and censorship-resistant. Library is decentralized, meaning that once a piece of content is uploaded, there are no central powers that could unilaterally decide to take it down. 
The file gets stored on various computers across the network, and the blockchain stores just the metadata, not the actual video itself. But, of course, if a video in question is straight up terrorist, violence inciting, or of similar nature, the video will be removed. When it comes to content moderation, Odyssey has very clear limits about what stuff will not be tolerated. But it's only the extreme, criminal, and illegal stuff. When compared to the opaque policies practiced by many traditional video sharing platforms, Odyssey truly stands out as a platform that has a clear goal. Fight censorship, be it for political reasons or succumbing to advertisers' demands. Now, having established the framework in which Odyssey operates, it's time to address the question of the utmost importance. For the creators, at least. The question of monetization. But to understand that, let's define what is the library token and what role it plays in the Odyssey ecosystem. The library token is a cryptocurrency that serves as the native digital currency of the library platform. It operates on a blockchain, similar to how Bitcoin and Ethereum do. The library token also plays a crucial role in Odyssey, as the video sharing platform is built on top of library. In Odyssey, library tokens are used as a means of rewarding content creators. Whenever a viewer watches a video on the platform, the creator earns library tokens based on the number of views that the content receives. This incentivizes creators to share their work and engage with the audience. The blockchain itself rewards the creators and not the advertisers. Additionally, library tokens can be used for tipping creators as a way to show appreciation for their content. Viewers have the option to send library tokens directly to the creators that they enjoy, providing an additional source of income for them. Moreover, library tokens can be used as a form of payment within the platform. For example, viewers can spend library tokens to access premium content or exclusive features offered by creators. So, as you can see, library is like the petrol on which the Odyssey machine runs. It's the backbone of this decentralized YouTube. But the monetization is not that simple. The game changer comes in when you achieve a certain level of verified viewership, which is determined by verified accounts that watch particular content. At this point, creators start earning on a per view basis, with the pay rate varying depending on factors like viewing duration and user engagement. Unlike YouTube, Odyssey empowers creators to break free from reliance on advertisements as their primary income source. Odyssey's payment model is refreshingly straightforward, as creators are rewarded purely based on the number of views they get. While Odyssey does take a small cut to support platform operations, it's nothing compared to the substantial 50% cut that YouTube often imposes on its creators. With Odyssey, video creators can truly reap the benefits of their hard work and creativity without unnecessary limitations. But you may wonder, where does this seemingly magical stream of library tokens flow from? Well, this requires us to take a look at the library tokenomics. These library tokens are also known as library credits, and they, of course, are not unlimited. It is said that there will eventually be over 1 billion tokens in circulation, which is planned to be achieved in approximately two decades. They are created through the process of mining, as library is a proof-of-work blockchain. That's why, when miners contribute their computational power to validate transactions on the network, they are simultaneously ensuring the blockchain security and decentralization. As a reward, they received newly minted library tokens. Besides content monetization and the tipping system, library tokens are also used to perform in-platform transactions. For example, users can use it to access premium content, purchase exclusive subscriptions, or unlock additional features offered by content creators. Library tokens are also governance tokens. Token holders have the opportunity to participate in the governance of the platform. By staking their tokens, users can cast votes on important decisions and proposals that shape the future of Odyssey and Library. By the way, if you feel like learning more about how staking works, be sure to check out my channel. I've got a separate video about this topic. So, as you can see, Library is the core of the Odyssey platform. That's why you'll sometimes hear enthusiasts comparing Library versus YouTube, or discussing Library as a YouTube alternative. They all refer to the same topic of a decentralized YouTube. There is a lot of room for improvement for Odyssey. After all, it's a relatively young platform. But the biggest troubles don't come from the inside. They come from the outside. You see, Library Incorporated, the company behind Odyssey, has been having a rather hard time. Library's legal troubles began with a complaint from the US Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, alleging illegal fundraising of $12.2 million through their token sales. Judge Peter Barbaro ruled that the library credits sold between 2016 and 2021 were unregistered securities, leading to Library's violation of the Securities Act. The SEC initially sought a $22 million fine, but due to Library's financial situation, the final fine was reduced to $111,614. But that's just the warm-up. The truth is that Library Incorporated has recently announced that they're closing their doors. For good. 
This comes as a result of the fact that the judge ruled the case in favor of the SEC, which led to a drastic decline in the value of the library token. Odyssey is set to be established as a separate company and continue trying to compete in the video sharing industry on its own. But nevertheless, it's obvious that such external tumultuous conditions may cause trouble and slow down technological advancements that this company would otherwise have implemented sooner. Having said that, we arrive at the end of this video. By now, the questions of how does a decentralized YouTube look like, what is Odyssey, and what is library have been answered. As you can see, the Odyssey video platform is an ambitious attempt at fixing an overarching problem that everyone who has anything to do with video content creation has experienced. And even though the debate of library versus YouTube has been concluded by the closure of library, it doesn't mean that the story is over. The Odyssey app and platform will continue trying to re-establish the public need for a truly decentralized platform, and the debate of Odyssey versus YouTube is far from being over. Do you use Odyssey yourself? What's your take on it? What do you think Odyssey has to do so that it could outgrow YouTube? Leave your insights and questions in the comments below so we could all participate in this debate. I hope that you found value in this video, and if you did, be sure to press those like and subscribe buttons, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.